In this section, I will give a brief introduction to inverse functions. Suppose that f is a one-to-one -one function. Then that means that to each x in the domain of f, there is exactly one y in the range. And to each y in the range of f, there is exactly one x in the domain. That is, your graph looks something like this. The inverse function of f denoted by f inverse is the correspondence from the range of f back to the mean of f. That means that if this is your f, then your f inverse would just be the function wherein the inputs and the outputs are interchanged. So it will look something like this. Previously for f, x1 goes to y1, x2 goes to y2, and x3 goes to y3. For f inverse, the direction just switched. So notice that the coordinate pairs of the inverse functions have the input and output interchange. That is, if a, b is in f, then if you interchange this, that one would be in its inverse function. So going back to this example, our f represented as a set of ordered pairs is x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. And therefore, our f inverse would just be the same set of ordered pairs except that they will be interchanged. y3, x3. We will discuss how to find inverses for all representations of functions, as maps, sets of ordered pairs, graphs, and equations. We begin with finding inverses of functions represented by maps or sets of ordered pairs. So for example, I have a function defined by this map over here. Clearly, this is one-to-one. -one. What would be the inverse of this function? What will happen is that these two sets will just be interchanged. You will now start with population in millions going to the state. And this is the inverse of the previous function. What if we have a set of ordered pairs? What would be the inverse of this? Notice that you have to check first whether it is one-to-one. -one. Yes, this is one-to-one -one because all of the x-coordinates are distinct and all the y-coordinates are distinct as well. If I call this f. My f inverse will just be everything, but the x and y coordinates are just interchanged. What is the domain of your function f? It's just a set of x coordinates. The range of f would just be the set of all y-coordinates. What would be the domain of f inverse? The domain of f inverse will be negative 27, negative 8, negative 1, and so on. And that is exactly your range of f. The range of f is the domain of f inverse. And the range of f inverse is... Why did this happen? Because remember that for the function n is inverse, the set of inputs and outputs are just interchanged. For example, we have f of x equals x cubed minus x, and t is the function 3, 1, negative 2, 3, 0, negative 5. We want to find the following. Let's start with f of t inverse of 3. What is t inverse of 3? What you can do is to write the inverse function, t inverse. So this one would be 1, 3, 3, negative 2, and 0, negative 5. So therefore, what is t inverse of 3? The image of 3 under the function t inverse is negative 2. And f of negative 2 is negative 2 cubed minus 2. This is equal to negative 8 minus 2 or negative 10. Next, t of f of 1. First, f of 1 is, this is t of f of 1. But notice that f of 1 is 1 cubed minus 
1, so that's 0. So therefore, t of f of 1 is just t of 0. And t of 0, let's look at the function t. When x is 0, its y is negative 5. Next, f of t of 3. f of t of 3, let's look at the function t. When x is 3, the y coordinate is 1. So t of 3 is 1. And f of 1, we already have it here. It's equal to 0. And lastly, f of t inverse of 1. t inverse of 1, let's look at the function t inverse. When x is 1, its y coordinate is 3. So t inverse of 1 is 3. And f of 3 is 3 cubed minus 3. That's 27 minus 3 or 4. I have already mentioned this in the previous slides, but then again, the domain and range of a function and its inverse gets interchanged. Suppose that I have an x in the domain of f. This is the domain of f. And since it's in the domain of f, I can apply f. And the name of the image will now become f of x. Note that f of x is in the range of f, but we just learned that the range of f is also the same as the domain of f inverse. Since this one lies in the domain of f inverse, we can apply f inverse to f of x. So we now apply f inverse. Since the input is f of x, what is the name of the image? The image is f inverse of f of x. However, by definition, what is f inverse of f of x? For f inverse, you start here and the image will now be x, correct? So we get this. This is saying that when you apply f to x and then you apply f inverse of that, you will just go back to your original x. So that is why we say that f and f inverse, they sort of undo each other. What if we started with x in the domain of f inverse? So there, there's x. My x here is in the domain of f inverse. Since x is in the domain of f inverse, I will apply f inverse. And what is now the name of that image? That would be f inverse x. f inverse x lies in the range of f inverse, which is the same as the domain of f, so therefore I can apply the function f. The image is f of f inverse of x, correct? Because this is the input and this is the function. But from your diagram, this one would go to x. So we have shown that if we start with x in the domain of f and we apply f first and then f inverse, we will get x. And then if we start with x in the domain of f inverse, we apply f inverse first and then apply f we then again get x. So this is what we have obtained earlier. Again, this is saying that f and f inverse sort of cancel each other. Notice here that x is inside the function f. So that's why you started here with x in the domain of f, whereas here you put x inside the function f inverse first. So that's why your assumption here is that x is in the domain of f inverse. We use these two properties to show that two functions are inverses of each other. So for example, we want to verify that the inverse of f of x equals 2x plus 3 is 1 half x minus 3. When it asks you to verify, you just have to compute f inverse of f of x, show that it's equal to x for all x in the domain of f and f of f inverse of x is equal to x for all x in the domain of f inverse. 
what is the domain of f? The domain of f is just the set of real numbers here, correct? Because this is just a linear function and the domain of f inverse is also the set of real numbers. This is just a linear function. So that means that we have to check this for all x in the set of real num numbers. First, let us start with f inverse of f of x. This is f inverse. Our f of x is 2x plus 3. If I change this to star, right? What is f inverse of star? It's 1 half of whatever star is minus 3. So f inverse of 2x plus 3 is 1 half times my star is 2x plus 3 minus 3. This is my star. And this is equal to 1 half times 2x, which is equal to x. So we're done. Next. Let's compute f of f inverse of x. That's f of our f inverse x is 1 half x minus 3. I want to compute f of 1 half x minus 3. Let's say we'll put that into box again. So that's 2 times box plus 3. And put 1 half x minus 3 inside the box. So we have 2 times 1 half times x minus 3 plus 3. PEMDAS, so you perform multiplication first, correct? So 2 times 1 half times x minus 3 is x minus 3 plus 3 you get. X. So therefore, we have verified that these two functions are inverses of each other. I want to show you that f and f inverse really undo each other. Why is that? If we consider the function f, what is happening to your input x? First, you multiply the input x by 2 and then you add 3. However, if you look at your function f inverse, what is happening to your input x here? By order of operation, starting from x, you subtract 3 first. Notice that that is the opposite of adding 3, correct? So you started with subtracting the input by 3 and then dividing the result by 2. So if you will now look at this, starting with an input x from f, you multiplied it by 2 and then you add 3. And then when you put it inside the function f inverse, you undo addition of 3 by subtracting it by 3, and then you undo multiplication by 2 by dividing it by 2. Let us have another example. Verify that these two functions are inverse functions. First, we want to show that f inverse of f of x is equal to x for all x in the domain of f. But what is the domain of f? The domain of f is the set of all numbers such that x is not equal to 1. So this is what we want to show first. Let us show this. f inverse of f of x is 1 over x minus 1. I'll write f inverse of box. This is 1 over box plus 1. So, f inverse of 1 over x minus 1 is 1 over 1 over x minus 1 plus 1. This fraction here is equal to x minus 1 plus 1. This is equal to x. We're done. Next, we want to show that f of f inverse of x is equal to x for all x in the domain of f inverse. What is the domain of f inverse? You just have a denominator of x here, so that means that the domain is the set of all real numbers such that it's not equal to zero. Let us now show this. We have f of my f inverse of x is 1 over x plus 1. I will write f of box is equal to 1 over 
box minus 1. So this is 1 over, my box is 1 over x plus 1 minus 1. The denominator is 1 over x and 1 all over 1 over x is equal to x. There you go. We were able to verify the two conditions. Let us discuss the relationship between the graph of a function and its inverse. Suppose that f is 1 to 1 and ab is an element of the function f. Since f is 1 to 1, its inverse function exists. And we interchange this ordered pair so that ba is an element of f inverse. Graphically speaking, this means that this is your point AB. This is an element of F. Then we know that BA would be an element of F inverse. What can we say about these two points? Note that these two points are symmetric with respect to the line Y is equal to X. So therefore, we have this result that the graph of a one-to-one -one function and the graph of its inverse are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. So now, given the graph of f, we can find its inverse by reflecting the graph along the line y is equal to x. So for example, we have this function here. I am, I am also given this three points. So to get the graph of its inverse, I have to construct first the line y is equal to x. And the line y is equal to x the line y is equal to x, that's, we have the points 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. So this line is we just extend this. How do we now get the reflection? Notice that the line y is equal to x cuts your graph into two. So what you need to do is reflect each part at a time. So for example, I will reflect this part first, this one. So in order to do that, you just have to interchange the ordered pairs. The ordered pair negative 2, negative 1 would go to negative 1, negative 2. The pair negative 1, 0 would go to 0, negative 1. And of course, this point will go to itself because you are already on the line y is equal to x, which means that the x and y coordinates are the same. So therefore, the reflection will join this two and these two points here. This is the reflection of this part. And then I will now reflect this line. 2, 1 will go to 1, 2. So this part will now become this line there. So this green part now is your F inverse. Another example, we already have the line Y is equal to X here. And this is much easier to reflect because it did not cross the line Y is equal to X. The point negative 2, negative 2 will go to itself. Negative 1, 0 will go to 0, negative 1. 0, 1 would go to 1, 0. 1, 2 will go to 2, 1. And our graph would be this one. This and this. Take note that I did not extend this because our original graph here is not extended. Let's look at this example here again. The line y is equal to x cuts your graph, so I will reflect it one at a time. So first, this part. The point 1, negative 1 will go to negative 1, 1. And when I reflect this along this line, it would be something like that. And then next, let's go to this line over here. Negative 2, 1 would go to 1, negative 2. This part over here, when I reflect it, 
would be this part over here. So this is now our graph. So that's just a rough sketch of your inverse. Next, notice here that for your function f, you have a horizontal asymptote, correct? As x approaches negative infinity, your y approaches 0. This is for the function f. So therefore, what would we expect? For the function f inverse, your x and y will now be interchanged. So as y approaches negative infinity, your x would now approach 0. I have a point here, 0, 1, so therefore, I will have a corresponding point, 1, 0, on my inverse. And from here, as y approaches negative infinity, your x would approach 0. So it will be like this. Right? And this one, when we reflect it, like this. Next. I have this graph. Note that the line y equals x intersects the graph at 1, 2, 3 points. So therefore, it divided your point into 4 parts. I will just reflect them one at a time. For this part over here, when I reflect it along the line y equals x, it would be this. For this one, it would be this. This would be something like that. This one will go here. And then let's turn it into one continuous graph because our original function f is continuous. There you go. This is now your inverse function. Let us just summarize what we have done in this lesson. A function is one-to-one -one if and only if its inverse function exists. The domain and range of a function and its inverse are interchanged. And to verify that f and f inverse are inverses of each other, you just have to show that they sort of cancel each other. And lastly, the graphs of f and f inverse are symmetric with respect to the line y is equal to x.